Zika virus, life on Mars, Donald Trump. What do they have in common? Well, they all made headlines over the past year in science. Yep, even Trump. So before we close out 2016, we're giving the Nationals science correspondent Bob McDonald a chance to pick his top 10 science stories to share with Canadians. Starting right now, number 10. Number 10 is not actually a science story, but it could affect how science is done in the future. That's the election of Donald Trump. Donald thinks that climate change is a hoax perpetrated by the Chinese. I think it's real. Speaking of global warming, where is we need some global warming? It's freezing. Yeah. The president-elect as a big science story? Why? Well, not really a science story, but he has scientists concerned because of what he was saying during the election campaign, saying climate change is a hoax, saying that he's going to pull out of the Paris Agreement, which is another huge science story, where 200 countries, including Canada, signed on an agreement to say we will reduce our carbon emissions by significant amounts. He's saying the U.S. is going to pull out of that, and the U.S. is one of the biggest carbon emission emitters on the planet. He also appointed someone to the head of the Environmental Protection Agency, who is a well-known climate skeptic. So climate scientists are worried, and environmental scientists are worried, that climate change might take a backseat to the economy. And so we're going to see whether or not what he does as president actually is the same as what he said he would do as an election. So hopefully common sense will prevail. Well, and uh, lots of threats against the actual EPA. We'll see whether right. that holds up. Lots to watch for there, but we're going to move on to number nine. Space entrepreneur Elon Musk presented the world with a futuristic vision and a challenge to send people to Mars. A lot of people. It's something that we can do in our lifetimes um, and that you can go. Musk plans on building the technology to put a million of us on the red planet within the next century. So what's the plan and why do we want to go there anyway? you got to admire this guy. Elon Musk says, I'm going to do something and he does it. He said, I'm going to build the world's best electric car. He did it. I'm going to build a private company that will put rockets into space and go to the space station. He did that. Now he's saying he, he has plans for a huge rocket that's powerful enough to send supplies and people to Mars. So he's saying the technology is there now. I will get you there. So is this for space you... geeks like you, or is this because Armageddon's coming? <laughs> well, Why he, do we thinks, need this? he thinks we need to be a two-planet species. Hmm. Now, I don't agree with that because the Earth is a perfectly fine planet. We should take care of that. But he does want to pre present a vision. We need visionaries. If we're going to go anywhere, we need people that set the bar high and say, hey, let's just try this. And, and this is what he's too. done. Yes, spend, yeah. it'll cost, but he's going to do it for far, far less than what NASA would do and do it faster and do it as a business. Mm -hmm. So why not? All the power to him. We need visionaries. The technology is there now. I say, let's go for it. You may not want to go in. Yeah, we'll send I'll you. It. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> but we'll see. We're going to move on to number eight. Thirty years after the world's worst nuclear disaster, the world's largest movable structure was rolled over the ruins of the Chernobyl reactor number four, sealing it for the next 100 years. How dangerous is the stuff under there? Very dangerous. It's highly radioactive, it's melted fuel, it's still there 30 years later. And in fact, it was so dangerous when the reactor exploded in 1986 that they hastily built a structure called the sarcophagus just to cover it up. But nobody wanted to work there, so they did it really fast. And it's leaking. It's leaking, it's falling apart. This new structure is made of steel and it's huge. You could put the entire Vatican. The whole, the whole St. Peter's Basilica inside this thing and still have room. So they've sealed it up, they put it over, and inside are robotic cranes that are then going to dismantle the whole old sarcophagus wow. and they're going to take care of the fuel with people working on the outside. So it's going to seal this, hopefully, for the next 100 years. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see where we'll that see goes. Where or goes. not. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bob. Hang on, we're going to go to number seven. A new planet has been added to our solar system way out beyond Pluto. We have no clue whether this planet has an atmosphere or not, but the existence of it is actually plausible. It doesn't have a name yet other than Planet 9 and hasn't even been seen, but astronomers are convinced it's there. So if they haven't seen it, how do they 
know, it's there. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you, we had nine planets, then Pluto got demoted because Pluto turns out to be a snowball that's part of a whole bunch of snowballs that go around our solar system. Well, it turns out that some of these snowballs are aligned in just a particular way that they must have been pulled by the gravity of another object beyond them. That's why they know the planet is there. So they see its influence, but they haven't seen it yet. Now they've narrowed down where to look for it. It's gonna be hard to see because it's very far away so it'll be dim and it won't move very far, very fast against the sky. But they think this thing could be the size of Neptune, which is bigger than the Earth. Doesn't so, it need a, a name, Planet Nine? Yeah, well, we, got, we got to come up with a better name. I think maybe Wendy, Bob. Bob, so, Bob, yeah. Bob would be Bob good. Bob would be good, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. But uh, that's, that's something for the future. They're gonna find it, they will find it. In the meantime, <laughs> here's number six. First ever landing on a comet. An unprecedented event. 2016 was a year of ups and downs for the European Space Agency. How exciting! How unbelievable! One robot chased a comet for a year. Another crash landed on Mars. Pretty unbelievable. Although Amazing. one of them landed in an upside down in a ditch. Right? Yes, it did. The, the one that landed on the comet. Ran out or... Yes, it did. But the, it also had a mothership that stayed in orbit around that comet, and it followed the comet all the way around the sun, watched the comet develop a tail and back again, and then at the end, just this year, they landed it on the comet as well. An unbelievable. Amazing. Never been done before. But what are we learning? Why does it matter? Comets are the oldest things in our solar system. They're they're what we came from, and some people believe that comets brought water and maybe the ingredients to life to the Earth in its early days. That's why they're worth studying. But unfortunately, they also had a bad accident. They tried landing on Mars, and it was a dumb little computer program fault. The lander was doing a perfect landing, and it thought it had already landed, but it was still three kilometers up. So it shut off its rocket engines and fell the rest of the way. Oops. Yeah. More, more to come. They're going to go back. They're going to go back in 2020 and do it again. Okay, we got to move on. Here's number five. This one is for the science geeks. Teleportation is now a thing. A group at the University of Calgary teleported information six kilometers proving Einstein's spooky action at a distance. So tell us how that works. What they did, you take two little photons, particles of light, you create them together, you separate them. If you affect one, the other one changes even though you didn't touch it. So they did this. They kept one photon in the lab at the University of Calgary. They sent the other one to City Hall downtown. So it's Star Trek, basically. Yeah, they changed it. What they're doing this, though, isn't transporter technology so much. It's okay. for encrypted information. You can send information. If somebody tampers with it, you will know. You'll know because that's what teleportation does. This one will be affected. So it's for encrypted information to make the Internet a safer place. So that's where it begins. Yeah. It's a twin thing. Wow. And Einstein predicted this, and once again, Einstein was proven right. Wow. It's amazing. He's, yeah, he is. Quite he's a, a hero. Uh, number four. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded for the development of nano machines, incredibly tiny devices that have huge implications in medicine and beyond. These are incredibly tiny. These are incredibly tiny. They're made of single molecules, and yet they have wheels and they have gears. You would swallow them. They would go into your bloodstream. They would find disease. They could eat tumors. They could repair your DNA. This is emerging technology that who knows what it's going to do. It's going to affect our lives both for health and for manufacturing, and we won't see them at all. Nanomachines. It's, it's a whole a new area A quick example. One thing. What can it do? Well, they're, they're working on uh, like trying to cut, go for cell repair. In, wow. in your own cells in your body, done by machines. Microsurgery, in done from lifetime. the inside. Yes, wow. it's all happening. We've got a lot more, three more, exactly, <laughs> but uh, we have to take a short break, but we will be right back with the rest of Bob's favorite science stories from 2016. One advance brought us closer to making designer babies. We're back with Bob McDonald and his top 10 science stories of 2016. We're down to the top three now. It's one of the scariest viruses we've seen in a long time, and even threatened the Olympic Games in Rio. There's no doubt, one of the biggest science stories of 2016 was the Zika virus. 
as you say, people were terrified by that. But we figured out a few things. Yeah, well, what Zika virus does, it, it was actually discovered decades ago in Africa, and it's really serious because if it affects pregnant women, it causes a birth defect called microcephaly, which is a small head for the baby, and it's really terrible. If you and I get it, we just get a cold. Which is, which is kind of spooky. But it got out of Africa. I get into South and North America, and people were worried in Rio about uh, going there for the Olympic Games. Some athletes pulled out of it, and it's also found in the United States in a couple of cases. There's no vaccine for it at the moment. So it's a scary thing, but they're working on it, and it can be dealt with. Going to move on now to the last two, number two. A new tool called CRISPR has made genetic engineering much faster and more precise. This is good news for treating genetic diseases, but it sparked controversy over whether it will lead to designer babies in the future. So it helps save lives, but it you does. can make designer babies? Well, it's a tool. It's a brand new tool for editing DNA, genetic engineering. And they're using it for cystic fibrosis, for Alzheimer's, for AIDS, to do very precise genetic disease changes to fix things that are wrong. That's great. But this year, the Chinese did an experiment where they altered sperm cells. Now, sperm cells are different because you pass that on to the next generation. So now there's an ethical debate that needs to happen. What are we going to do with this tool? All tools that we come along with, they can be used for good or they can be used in areas that we don't want them to go. So there has to be a boundary set. Are we going to have designer babies? Because we can't have a population saying, well, we all want boys. You can't do that. Or we all want blonde hair, blue eyes, or whatever. And tall, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so there has to be ethical decisions on this. It's a powerful new tool that can do tremendous good, but we got to talk about it seriously. Well, that's a big debate for many years to come, I'm sure, but we have now Bob's top science story of 2016. It's a prediction Einstein made 100 years ago, and it took that long to see them. I would love to see Einstein's face. All of this incredible stuff, the strong field gravity, is in his equations. Scientists are all abuzz with the discovery of gravitational waves. So he just has to be the coolest guy ever. We're still finding out stuff that he predicted. Yeah, and, and nobody can prove him wrong about anything that he did. So he predicted that the space that's between you and I right now, Wendy, is flexible. It can stretch. It can compress. Yes. And it can do it when big things like black holes come together and spin around. Space can ripple, and these ripples, like on the surface of a pond, can go right across the entire universe. It took 100 years to find them. It took an incredibly elaborate experiment to do it because these waves are incredibly tiny. They're smaller than a proton. But they did find them. And it, what it does now is show us not only that Einstein was right, but these waves, because they don't stop, they can go through anything, they will let us see things. Waves carry information. You can see me because of light waves. Radio waves carry information. Gravitational waves can tell us about black holes, bizarre things like that, and maybe the ultimate shaker of the universe, the Big Bang itself. So it's a new area of astronomy, gravitational astronomy. Who knows what we're going to see? Very exciting. Well, it's always wonderful to see you at the end of the year and see you so excited about science <laughs> year after year. Well, thanks so much for sharing Thank you, all Wendy. of this with us tonight. Thanks, always Bob. a pleasure.